Okay, so thank you just briefly to introduce me. I'm uh, uh, Andrea Bollini, I'm the head of technology in uh, for science. Uh, we have a high specialized company in uh, Italy that provides service uh, for open science in general. And we only work with the open technology, open source software, and with standard. Uh, it's really important to me to say it's an honor to me to be here, and uh, I really feel part of the open community. Uh, it's 15 here that I work with open source community, and one thing that really characterizes for science is that all our projects are very open in terms of implementation. So for us, the default is we want to do something with an institution, and this, uh, uh, the achievement that we get with the institution need to go back to the original community and benefit for all. So we work with several open source uh, communities. Uh, the most important for us is, of course, DuraSpace, and we work on uh, the space software, but we also work on open journal system and uh, Dataverse, for instance. So I will talk about the technology. So sorry, I'm the tech guy here. And uh, uh, in this graph, I used uh, the pink color to identify technologies and the green color to identify behavior. Uh, the size of behavior is the same, is not uh, one more important than another. The size of the technology depends on the number of behavior that are linked to this technology. So what we have decided to do is to focus on the most urgent technology in terms of what this technology will enable. And uh, for us, it was signposting our resource sync, the most evident. It is also nice to see that uh, signposting a resource sync is in some way related to the same cluster of behavior. And also there is uh, uh, just another behavior that is not directly linked to signposting a resource sync in the bottom corner, but is indirectly linked to activity stream. So is in some way prepared when you have signposting and resource sync. So starting from signposting, signposting is something very cool and nice because it's easy. It's so easy to implement that uh, we have a lot of implementation already uh, ready around the world. Is, uh, uh, the idea is to use the fundamental of the web technology to make any resource much more uh, machine friendly. So when a user go on a web page, it's easy for a human to, to know what they need to do to download a PDF file, to, to consult something. Okay, sometimes it's not easy also for human, but it's much easier than for a machine to found in a journal page, in an article page, which is the PDF file and which are some notice advertising or uh, guideline or any other thing that are in, uh, uh, in the page. So the idea of the same posting is to tag uh, the, uh, the precious information in the page in a way that is uh, understandable by machine. So it's use link HTTP header to do that. So when you look to, the, uh, to your browser, you don't know uh, uh, signposting is invisible for a human, but the browser will receive additional information together with the web page uh, where you know about uh, which is the PDF described in, uh, uh, in the splash page of the article, uh, which are the author and information like that. Signposting is already implemented in this space, Chris, and in Open Journal System. I'm glad to say that this was implementation that we done and released it to the community. The open journal system implementation was funded by OpenAir. So in January, we have received funds from the open notation call of OpenAir to improve the interoperability of the platform. And also the Space 7, the next version, uh, has decided to provide support for signposting. What can mean for uh, um, a research and why it could be interested for, uh, interesting for open air. So many of you know open air, I hope probably most of you, and open air is just an, um, one of the major aggregators of information, unless in the European uh, ecospace. And uh, uh, 
it collects a lot of information from journal platform using IPMH. So IPMH is great, is very useful to have. We need to continue to support OIPMH, and we need to improve the metadata exposed over OIPMH. But OIPMH is limited to only transfer metadata. So in the best scenario, in your IPMH record, you have a new URL that will point somewhere. But the aggregator cannot know if this URL is just the splash page of the record, is the full text, or whatever it is. So in the case of OpenAir, they have a record for a journal article, and they can provide a download from option that is just a guess of what will happen when you click on this URL. But it can be anything. In this case, it's just an open journal system, so you click on this, page, on this link and you get the splash page of the article in, uh, in OJS. But OpenAI is not able to provide you directly the link to the PDF file. So in some cases, it could be easy to discover, in other cases, it could be a bit complicated. But most important, if the machine cannot understand which is the PDF, it cannot start to process the PDF. So um, advanced service like preservation or text mining on this PDF file is not enabled because the aggregator cannot know about the PDF file. Another important thing is that in the open journal system, you have the license. So here we have a Creative Commons license that is very well identified. But unfortunately, this information is not transported over IPMH. So also this information is lost when you go to the aggregator level. And we have proposed to extend the signposting uh, standard to also have a standard way to expose this information to aggregator. So the second uh, technology for us was resource sync. Resource sync is a bit more complicated to, uh, to be implemented. And this is why uh, it exists since some year now. Probably the first version was back to 2013. So it's nothing new, it's five year old. And uh, it's come from uh, the Van Sample uh, Research Group and is promoted as the successor of OIPMH. So it tried to solve some of the major problem of the IPMH. But as it's a bit more complicated, we lack of implementation in the open source community in the repository world. Which are the uh, problems that they solve? It's much faster and reliable of the IPMH protocol. So if you go to implement this, uh, this protocol, your IT dev team will, uh, will like it. Uh, we'll be glad to see the, the load on the system go down compared to IPMH. And uh, also, is, uh, um, it allows real-time notification. So you don't need to wait a long time before then an aggregator will synchronize your repository. Uh, Sometimes large aggregator will take uh, weeks or months to get new content from your repository in it. And it is due to the... Uh, intrinsic limitation of IPMH, so it's just not possible to make more frequent harvesting of your repository. And it's also drive content, so you don't share only metadata, but you share your content, you share your file, you share your data set, everything that is published through your repository can be synchronized. And this is really important for uh, uh, scenario like uh, uh, you want to create overlay service for preservation, for uh, text mining, and things like that. What is changing? Uh, so, sorry, just a few words uh, more about the uh, resource sync um, framework. It is based on sitemap protocol. So it's a bit more complicated, but it's not really complicated. It's some on build on something very easy. Sitemap is a, just an XML file that is typically used by web uh, master to better present the list of resources on your website to Google to, to allow better indexing. So using the same technology, you will tell to an interested party about what you have in your repository. And this is just what the resource sync call uh, resource list. 
It is machine discoverable. This is really important. So another machine, an investor that go over your website, over your institutional repository, don't need to send you an email to discover if you have implemented this protocol and how to access this protocol. It is uh, written directly in a machine form uh, in your uh, repository. So they automatically discover where your resource sync uh, uh, is exposed and which capability are uh, implemented in your uh, um, resource sync implementation. This is because resource sync have different level of implementation. You can start easy and you can add additional advanced feature uh, later. Capability list is exactly that. So it's an XML that describe what you expose, which service you provide, and which are the group of your uh, resources. Uh, in some way are related to the OIPMH set, uh, because you can decide to expose a different group of resources as different capability lists, so to allow synchronization of sub-portion of your repository, maybe for uh, disciplinary uh, repository or thing like that. Change lists are very important because allow incremental synchronization. So instead then uh, synchronize all the content every time. Uh, if I synchronize your repository today, I can just go back tomorrow and uh, see what is changed in one day and get only the, the delta of, uh, of the change. And I can do that at any frequency so that uh, uh, the update time will, uh, will be reduced. But another interesting aspect is uh, it's a framework. So additional specification are added, are currently already uh, exist, to add additional features to this framework. One of them is the notification uh, framework that allow real-time synchronization. The idea is to implement uh, the, uh, uh, the Hollywood paradigm. So instead then have the aggregator to go to the repository and ask for change is the repository that will call any interesting part saying, hey, I have something new that you could be interested. And you are allowed to immediately synchronize your system. This is very important also for all the interactive uh, behavior that we uh, describe in our report. Because if you have a repository that track a journal article, and uh, you expose a new journal article, this can be captured by an overlay system that uh, want to provide peer review. Uh, and uh, in the opposite side, if you store in your repository the result of a peer review process, you want to have other repositories in the network to be informed about this new artifact so to create uh, a cross-linking between repositories. The good news is that uh, just yesterday, uh, we have released uh, the implementation for a new implementation for the space. Uh, this was funded again from by OpenAir. So now the space in the all the recent version, version five, six, and the next version seven, will have an out of box implementation for resource sync. We are in touch with the community. We are proposing to include this implementation out of box. In, uh, in the source code of this space. So uh, we will work in the coming month to make this possible. But right now, you can go on GitHub and download implementation. It's nice to say that this is not only our work, but we started with uh, some very good work from Richard Jones of Cottage Labs. So it's really a collaborative work, and this is good for, uh, for the community. I want to do a step back. Uh, many slides of uh, Catherine say, which is a next generation repository. Uh, one was back uh, on the report of OCLC, and uh, it say we need to go behind uh, journal article. So this is really important. We need to provide access to a wide diversity of resources. And we need to be resource centric. Uh, for me, to be resource-centric also means that uh, researchers need to access something, but access doesn't mean that you download and you forget about the repository. In the ideal scenario, you should be able to go on the repository, find something that is interesting, and work on the repository to make your research. 
it's a network repository. We need to avoid the risk to, to be biased. So it needs to be distributed. You need to control your own resources. And uh, it's also a, a basic principle of preservation. A lot of copy keep you safe. So everything is good in network and distributed environment. It needs to be machine friendly because we want to process the data. We want to process both the data than uh, the metadata. And again, it needs to be active. So you need to provide service to the researcher. You need to, be, to react to external action. You need to react to the social uh, web. You need to uh, automatically discover activities that are related to the, uh, to the content. Also to say if these activities happen on different repository. So we talk a lot about peer review. It's important to provide open peer review on top of repository. But we cannot limit our idea to build a peer review, for instance, inside the repository. It just don't make sense. Because you cannot make open peer review on only your content. For me, peer, open peer review is you can find everything on the network of the repository. You make your peer review. And uh, I want to be sure that the activity, the result of the peer review activities is also stored in an open way. So for me, the result of the open peer review need to be stored in a distributed network, need to be stored in the repository. So I'm a researcher from a university. I deposit my peer review activities in my institutional repository. But these peer review activities is related to something that is deposited elsewhere, of course, because I don't review only content from my uh, co-researcher. So this is my favorite uh, uh, behavior. That is the interaction with the resource. See, this is because, in my perspective, is the behavior that better describes next generation repository is something where uh, the researcher is the daily activity of the researcher. I found something and I start to research, to study on this content. There are several use cases related to the ability to work on resources in the repository, like annotation, commentary, peer review, as discussed. And uh, some concrete example around that. One technology that we have identified is AAAF. Uh, it's really, in some cases, the most content-specific technology that we have identified. But it is a very good technology in terms of openness, has a standard, and applied to a wide range of, uh, um, of format. It's applied better to images, obviously. And it can be used to work on digitalized book. Uh, so in this case, you see a complex digitalized book that you can access the table of content, you can access the, uh, the metadata, you can uh, search inside your digitalization. This enables a lot of collaboration across repository and across research around the world. You can share your digitalized resources with other repository so that if you could have uh, uh, a manuscript that is digitalized in your uh, repository, and uh, the researcher using this technology can compare side by side your manuscript with another manuscript uh, um, digitalized in a different repository. So without the need to download the content and use offline tool to do that. Uh, they can work collaborative on the transcription on commentary on this content. And this will be done on open standard using W3C web annotation. So also this content will be machine, machine readable. So it will be an XML at the end. And also in that, we are working on this aspect. So we have extension for the space to implement AAAF. But AAAF is a very growing community. Most of the open source platform already have some solution to be compliant with AAAF. When we talk about data set, if you want to interact with a data set, you cannot imagine that you want to download one terabyte or one gigabyte of file. So also in this case, the open source community will make a lot of progress. Many things need still to be done. But we are in the right path, in my opinion. So CCAN, for instance, is an open source uh, solution for data repository. 
automatically create web service, open web service, open data, uh, on top of your uh, tabular data. This allows you to, to query your data instead and download your CSV file, TSV file, and so on. Also, Dataverse in the recent version allow a better integration directly with the data. So, researchers can access the data directly, uh, streaming this data, access this data using uh, uh, their uh, preferred scripting language R or uh, Python or whatever. There are a lot of uh, investigation right now to automatically, for instance, create Jupyter book notebook from Dataverse. Uh, including both uh, uh, the source code, the software, and the access to the data set uh, stored in uh, Dataverse somewhere. And as for science, we have released um, an integration between the space Chris and SICAN so that you can take advantage of uh, the SICAN feature inside the space uh, for free. Uh, this is, of course, all open source and, um, stuff that you can find on GitHub. Uh, these are some examples from SICAN uh, uh, and the DSpace SICAN integration. So if your uh, researcher upload a CSV file, you can instead of download this file, you can just browse, you can have a paginated view of this content so that at least another researcher can take a quick view of the data before to decide to download um, a large amount of data. Uh, you can filter and you can uh, also make some graph of this information. And this is done using web service. This means that uh, other than just use this tool for preview, your researcher can access this data using their preferred scripting language. So they don't they need to download the data to process the data that are stored in the repository. So uh, my last slide is how to contribute. I think it is very important at a high level to support implementation of this standard. In some cases, there are uh, uh, technical specifications, so our technology, but this is the, the base that will enable us to build the next generation repository. Uh, we need this uh, fundamental uh, standard and protocol to be able to provide advanced service and overlay services on top of, uh, of the repositories. You need to keep your repository open to other content, so we need to, it's not only journal article. You need to accept, you need to incentivate the researcher to store in the repository other kind of content. So video content are welcome, are very used data set in social science. Uh, you need to store a lot of images. This is used in uh, medicine, astrophysics, uh, in uh, uh, whole humanities, uh, and so on. And you can also join the conversation with the next generation editorial group on GitHub. So we welcome uh, uh, suggestion about technology that need to be monitored or other behavior that uh, need to be implemented in the repository and so on. Uh, 